going to have a look at time management in this video. Time management. There's a lot to do and when you're preparing for an exam the steps that uh, you need to tick off might include preparing a study area whether at home or at school. You need to list all the topics that are going to be in the upcoming exam and the, the topics that you need to study. You need to revise your class notes and if you haven't made summaries yet you need to perhaps summarize them so you're not trying to study 50 pages of a of your class notes and you've summarized them down to a manageable chunk. You might like to study major examples that uh, the exam might ask you questions on. You might like to uh, memorize the rules and formulas just in case they're not included in the questions or on a formula sheet. It's best to know them backwards if you can going into the exam. And it's great if you've got the time to practice exam style questions, typical of the ones that might come up in the exam itself, all in the hope that you might be able to successfully complete the exam. So each of these steps can't really be rushed successfully. So time management is really important. For uh, time management, starting early is one of the keys. Starting a revision for exams well before the exam date allows plenty of time to revise all the topics, to know them thoroughly and uh, not uh, so that you're not hoping that some topics won't be asked a question on, that you'll be ready for anything. To memorise rules and formulas so you know how to work with all of those. To practice as many exam style questions as you can so you feel really ready. And even to ask for help from the teacher if you're stuck or you're not sure exactly what specific things the exam's going to ask about, you, you've got time to uh, consult with them. Even with, um, even with assignments, starting early is pretty important. If you start well before the due date, it takes that stress of the deadline out of there and allows plenty of time in that situation to collect all the necessarily, necessary information from a variety of sources to ask for guidance from the teacher, even to show them your work so far or your planning so far and see if you're on the right track. Also, it allows you time to decide the best way to present the final version of your assignment and maybe even do a dummy run and seeing if it, see if it turns out well. And to do your very best work. So we're going to compare two students here on a few different tasks. We've got three tasks and a bit of exam preparation. Let's see how we go for the tale of two students here. Student A, when they got their first task, they started straight away. Student B is having a bit of a rest at this stage because they think they can. Uh, student A completes task one in the necessary week. Uh, and when they get task two, um, they've already completed task one and they've got some clear air to do task two as properly as they can. They finish task two before they get their task three and they've checked their schedules to make sure that's all possible. And they finish task three well before that's, that's possibly due. And then when uh, there's some exam preparation for perhaps two weeks, they've got the whole of that two weeks to prepare for their exams thoroughly. Uh, not trying to finish off uh, tasks as well as um, pre preparing for exam at the exams at the same time. Student B, however, he takes a bit of a break for a couple of weeks and only starts his uh, task one a couple of weeks before it's due. Unfortunately, uh, because he's had a bit of rest time before that, task two uh, actually is given out uh, before he's completed task one. And that means there's a section here where he's trying to do two things at once, he or she. And uh, that's uh, even though studies might um, suggest otherwise, uh, multitasking is never a really successful idea particularly when another task comes in and you might be trying to do three things at once, which is not all that acceptable. And you can have a look there. Student B, because they've left it till later, um, are actually trying to, they're actually trying to complete tasks while they're supposed to be preparing for their upcoming exams. So when it comes to exam prep, they're still madly trying to finish off tasks and um, they end up with only sort of a quarter of the exam preparation time that they should have had really because they're finishing off assignments that they should they could have knocked over a lot earlier. So coming up to exam week there, you can see that student B only really got to uh, madly prepare for their exams after they finished their third assignment and um, didn't do a, a great job, uh, one presumes. So the key for time management is, can you delay your gratification? That's a fancy term that says, can you put off till later the rewards of maybe having a break?
in the interest of getting some control over your time. And the key uh, motto here is see if you can work when you don't have to. Uh, student B before, they didn't have to start their assignments um, as soon as they got them, but in the end they regretted uh, not doing that. So if you, if you can make yourself work when it's not uh, totally urgent, then that can smooth out those uh, rough patches where you might, um, you might be able to avoid having to do two or three things at once. So I highly recommend the following approaches. Get a big list, a proper list of all the tasks that you've got on your plate and uh, list them in order of deadline and start ticking them off in, in the order in which they're due. Give each task a home in your diary on a, or on a study schedule. And uh, studies suggest that uh, if you give a task a home, you're likely to give it um, your full attention. So task one, you might say, OK, I'm going to uh, make sure I, I start uh, gathering the information for task one next Tuesday between 3.30 and 4.30. And uh, try and make yourself stick to that. Start the first task on your list in order of deadline as soon as you can. And as soon as you finish that first task, try and make yourself or help yourself by starting the next task as soon as you finish the previous task. It's not easy, but you'll get the hang of it. And finish a task, try and finish a task only when you're really proud of the job and uh, it's done and, and you've done a great job. Try to avoid the idea that you're finishing a task because it's uh, one o'clock in the morning and uh, that's the day before it's due and you need some sleep. That's a pretty poor reason for finishing a job. So time management in the end helps you in a, a number of different ways. It helps you reduce your deadline stress. If you get on with the next task as soon as the previous task is finished, sometimes you can avoid deadlines altogether really. It's almost like there's, there's no deadlines because you're the one in control of your time. It helps you focus on one task at a time and that means you can do a proper job. And it helps you to increase the quality of your work. You decide when you're done and uh, that's when you've done a fantastic job and you couldn't do anything better to improve that task. And it helps you generally. It helps you feel in control of your life and in, in control of your time and you can do your best work. I hope that helps. Now one way to help you there is from peterblakemaths.com on any of the pages there, particularly the math pages, down the very bottom on the left hand side there's a section with, a, with this time management video and an Excel study planner that you can um, download and start scheduling your time properly. You can put your tasks in a particular time. It goes from 4 o'clock in the afternoon through to 10 o'clock at night. These are sort of the after school type hours. You've got all the weekend hours there as well. Um, so that's just a starting, starting uh, tool for you to, to really get into the habit of giving each task a home in order, a strict order of deadline so you can do a proper job. Hope all that helps and all the best with your studies.